I must say I am very, very disturbed as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago to see a former Prime Minister, an opposition leader aspiring for office sometime in the distant future, playing the role that Mrs. Prasad Bissessa is playing now. Her desperation should now be of concern to all our citizens. I would, I would tell you, and um, at an, another time other ministers can tell you, Minister, a young national security minister, he interacts with the Americans on a regular basis on matters of national security. Minister Moses interacts with them on, a mat, on matters of uh, foreign affairs of all types. I can tell you now, as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, that the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago is a very good one. We have no fight going on. Trinidad and Tobago and the United States is a very good one. And we continue to interact on an ongoing basis. And um, if, if Minister Young and others have time, they will tell you exactly what we've done in recent times and so on. We continue to maintain the, open, the, the avenues of contact. We share resources and we interact along the way. For some reason, and I think we know the reason, the reason is that the opposition in Trinidad and Tobago has been deemed to be irrelevant. An election is due sometime in the not too distant future. Desperation has set in. And it is the opposition's position now that they must find a campaign. That's okay. Oppositions do that. But unfortunately, the campaign that they have decided to focus on to give them some element of opportunity at the polls is a campaign that they believe can be destructive to Trinidad and Tobago. And today, again, the opposition leader alludes to that destruction that can come our way if their speculation and allegation could raise the United States to a level of wanting to take action against Trinidad and Tobago. She went in the, in the press conference to raise some questions I want to answer for you all. She wanted to know um, when was the request made by Vice President Delcy Rodriguez to meet with me in Trinidad. And she ties that in with some action by, by the United States putting sanctions or um, criminal charges against Maduro and others and so on. Let me go, let me just answer her questions for Delcy Rodriguez was appointed by the Venezuelan government to head the COVID response in that country on the 12th of March. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, sorry, that's, that's, our, that's our day. That's, that's our first, 12th of March, our first COVID. It was on the 27th, yeah. She was appointed on the 27th of February. And I left this country and I went abroad. I think I traveled on the 1st of March. Minister Young traveled with me and got back here on the 4th of March. As soon as he got back here, before I got back here, this appointment of Delcy Rodriguez as the head of COVID had taken place the week before. She requested to meet with Trinidad and Tobago. When I got back here on the 10th of March from Ghana, I met this request. A request made a week after she was appointed to the COVID team. The request was made to Minister, to Minister Young, who brought it to my attention when I got back here. I agreed to meet with her. She indicated at the time, so after I agreed that I'll meet with her, she indicated through Minister Young that she had the flu. And she was told, I presume by Minister Young, that it's better not to come here if she has the flu. And to meet, we could meet sometime after. She turned, she, the, she came here on the, on the, yeah, the meeting was postponed from Monday the 16th to the 27th of March. So she came on the 27th. And yes, there was a delegation, a small delegation that accompanied her. Um, I think they were all men. Most of whom were not introduced to us. The meeting took place at 
the diplomatic center, and on the, on the Trinidad and Tobago side, we had Minister Young, Minister Moses, myself, and actually, um, there was no, um, they, she did not discuss um, before the details of what you want to talk about, right? Present with her was, I'm now discovering, some person called Az, Azdrubal Chavez, who I'm now discovering as part of the commission, he, he worked as part of a commission for PDVSA restructuring at some point in his past. Nobody in that meeting was introduced to us as president of PDVSA. Nobody. And I can confirm now that at that meeting on that day, there was no president of PDVSA there. I'm discovering that subsequent to that meeting, this individual had been promoted, right? Okay, but on the day, on the 27th of March, or the 16th of March, when this meeting was um, expected, 27th of March, no person was introduced as representing the uh, president of PDVSA, nor was there, as to the best of our knowledge, the president of PDVSA. There was an individual who had a contact with PDVSA on some, the commission for PDVSA restructuring, that I'm discovering that now. Question, half of the press conference was about an aircraft, an aircraft that was sanctioned by the United States. But let me just say this. The Venezuelan presidency has been to Trinidad and Tobago on many occasions, coming by what we presume are presidential aircraft, not by commercial travel. I have never asked, I've never been told, and I don't know it's the protocol to find out from the president of Venezuela or the presidency what aircraft they're coming on, what is the aircraft number I mean, That is a matter for civil aviation department. Once we gave the approval for the, for the visit to take place, matters relating to equipment is a matter for civil aviation. And as far as I am aware, I know nothing, nor did anybody in my delegation know anything about any particular aircraft. We're now discovering this today by the great amount of work done by the opposition in trying to fuel American anger. We're discovering today that the aircraft that they came on, a Venezuelan aircraft, which we expected, a Venezuelan aircraft is a Pedevisa aircraft which was sanctioned by the United States. And therefore, that is grounds for the, for the opposition leader to be calling down fire and brimstone on the head of Trinidad and Tobago. We sanction the arrival in this country of all kinds of private and governmental aircraft, including American aircraft. And the Minister of National Security in a separate time could tell you about the most recent. I think we, there were two aircraft. We sanction private aircraft, private jets from oil companies. We don't ask who owned the jets and they, what is the number. That is all a matter for civil aviation. But when the opposition members, I took careful note of Rudal Munilal, in his missive to the American ambassador, saying that the sale of fuel from a commercial company managed by managers in that company could not have taken place without the knowledge and consent of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. They went out of their way to make that point. When in fact, the transaction was an ordinary transaction dealt with below board, not even by the board. Purchase and sale of that fuel is done by the management of that company. But the opposition sees it fit to seek to incite American reaction against Trinidad and Tobago. Now, I wonder just who is Kamala Prasad Bissessa working for at this point in time? And coming here and holding up the transportation detail of an aircraft that came into our country and calling the names of people that we, we in a delegation from Venezuela, let me just put all this in perspective. Eh? Trinidad and Tobago, publicly, internationally, acknowledges Venezuela as its closest neighbor, acknowledges the UN Charter, and our response in dealing with Venezuela, as you may recall, when the Venezuelan United States relationship deteriorated with the exchange or the removal of ambassadors, Trinidad and Tobago at CARICOM and with CARICOM, we went to the United Nations 
and we were there for a purpose. Abby, could you, Abby? Bring me the express, please. We, as the government of Trinidad and Tobago, and as CARICOM, we went to the United Nations and we took the position that we will acknowledge the government of Venezuela as acknowledged by the United Nations. It was the President of the United Nations who said to us there that it matters not what is happening elsewhere. At the United Nations, the UN can only sit and recognize the Maduro government as the government of Venezuela. And we maintain that position as a CARICOM position. So I don't understand why I don't understand why our opposition leader is going out of her way, she and her minions, to try to incite the United States to convert their speculation into a situation where Trinidad and Tobago is deemed to have acted illegally and we are deserving of the wrath of the United States. I shouldn't say I don't understand. It is to create an, it is to create they are attempting to curry favor in the United States and to create a political argument that they could use against the PNM in an election, that we are threatening people's good life in the United States. Let me just say that today the opposition leader of Trinidad and Tobago said something which again was quite startling. She said that by that aircraft coming into Trinidad and Tobago, we have broken international law. I want to remind you all that while we are cognizant of the long arm of the United States and the power of its uh, activity against small states like ours and others, we know that the sanctions against Venezuela, they don't come from international law. They come from an executive order of the, uh, order of the United States. So for the opposition leader in Trinidad and Tobago to convert an American president executive order into international law and calling on the Americans to beat up on Trinidad and Tobago because we have broken international law because a sanctioned aircraft something unknown to us has flown into our territory is really something that should cause us to ask just who is Kamla Prasad Bissasa working for? And let me tell you all something else too. All of this is happening on the day when the Express carries a story. And I want to draw your attention to two paragraphs in this story on page four of the Express. And I draw this to the attention of the national community. The paragraph say, and I'm quoting here, and this is, I'm quoting the report in the Express where they're reporting what the American ambassador told the Express. In general, entities and individuals risk exposure to U.S. sanctions by operating in the Venezuelan oil sector or materially assisting, sponsoring, or providing financial, material, or technological support or goods or services to in support of PDVSA or other persons designated or identified under relevant sanction authorities. Now we have provided no support of any kind for PDVSA. I understand what is being said here by the United States Ambassador. But why is the opposition leader trying to give the impression that Trinidad and Tobago has done what the ambassador is raising there as a concern? Providing support for PDVSA. Our country has not done that. And so far, all that is being said about the sale to Aruba is yes, we have sold fuel from Paria to Aruba. Yes, we are not responsible for what happened to the fuel once it got to Aruba or after. We are discovering now that it is being said that the fuel, the, the fuel went to Venezuela. It is still speculation, allegation, and may or may not, because the United States has not made that allegation to Trinidad and Tobago as an action which they have put to us. The people who are driving that argument is the opposition in Trinidad and Tobago. 
But the other paragraph is most important. It says, this remains true, meaning the US sanctions against helping PDVSA. This remains true regardless of how the transactions with Venezuela are conducted, whether using currency or in-kind exchanges, and without respect to whether such conduct is otherwise legal under another country's laws, unquote. So apparently, our, ambas our opposition leader is very happy with a position which says that it matters not what a country's law is. If an executive law, if an executive order is made in Washington, it supersedes the country's laws and this is no international law. That is what Kamla Prasad Bissasa has said today, accusing us of breaching international law. By, by, according to her, breaching American sanctions by allowing a Venezuelan aircraft to come to Trinidad and Tobago. So as far as she's concerned, the case, has, the case for sanction has been made because the aircraft is sanctioned. It came to Trinidad, so the case for sanction has been made. That is what caused Kamala Prasad Bissato today to leave the parliament in session, to come out of the parliament, to call a press conference, to make the case for sanctions against Trinidad and Tobago. I can tell you, the only correspondence, the only conversation that we've had with the United States, not even correspondence, a Dimash conversation. Minister Young met with the ambassador, spoke to the ambassador well, last week, two days ago. Our foreign ministry is in contact with the Americans. The only Dimash between Trinidad and Tobago today, the Americans say, from open source, this matter has been raised, this matter of Trinidad and Tobago's fuel ending up in Venezuela. From open source, eh? you know what open source means? You know. Open source means we have seen that in the papers. We have seen that in the papers. So after the UNC planned the story in the papers, got it published by writers, hold on to it for their life in Trinidad and Tobago, the Americans are saying, we've seen that in open source, and the UNC is beating it for all it's worth to provoke the Americans into sanction in Trinidad and Tobago. Open source means we've read something in the papers, and of course, if that is true, then you know there are consequences for dealing with us. If it is true, if you have dealt, if you have, if, you know, and may, and allegations, and open source documents, but of course, in this conversation, the open source of the company saying we dealt properly with the, with, with, the, with the shipping company, the open source of the Minister of Energy in Trinidad and Tobago saying we have not traded with Venezuela on this matter, the open source of the Prime Minister saying in the Parliament when, when asked if I was aware of trading with Venezuela, for, with Vril, the Prime Minister said no, I'm not aware of that. And most importantly, with Trinidad and Tobago saying we are not in the business of breaking sanctions to create difficulties for Trinidad and Tobago. That part of the open source is not there. The open source of the UNC hammering this point that we have in fact broken American sanctions and therefore calling on the United States to sanction Trinidad and Tobago for breaching international law. Well, today we want to say to Ms. Kamla Prasad, Mr. Sir, we take comfort in the United Nations Charter Article 2, our public foreign policy position is that we insist for small states protection as we did in January 2019, as the United States. And as I spoke in September at the United Nations in New York, that we and little countries like ourselves, we hold on to the rules-based diplomacy of the United Nations Charter. That's where we stand and not in acknowledging the, an international law in the form of a United States executive order. We acknowledge an executive order for what it is. We acknowledge what can happen when big states beat up on small states. You know that. This is our world. We live here. But we also are a member of the United Nations, and our foreign policy is very clear. And the fact that we have in Trinidad and Tobago parliamentarians who are doing what the UNC is doing now should be of concern to 
all the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Because this is reprehensible conduct. And it's, it's gone beyond the diary of a mad failed politician. Yeah. You know, my dear, is not in the parliament. <laughs> but the threat is there. If I had contact with the producer, I would call him and tell him we have a mad here for him. If there are any questions, I'll take it now because parliament, um, the parliament will allow me. If you have any questions on this issue, just on this issue, I'll, I'll take it now. We have, if it turns out, if it turns out that the aircraft, because she was waving documents, right? Yeah. If it turns out that the aircraft that the Venezuelan delegation came on is an aircraft that was identified by the United States, that was unknown to us. Because we do not normally ask the presidential delegation what, what aircraft you're coming on, who owns the aircraft, and so on and so on. If they come on a government aircraft, we could be familiar with that. And the same thing applies to the United States. When they ask us to allow certain facilities, you know, and, and of course, the same thing with the oil companies. What she is doing, she has now found what she figures is the smoking gun. Right? And even if an aircraft that, that has so been identified, why is the opposition leader still in that pot? I will wait until the United States says to me that we have proven or we have, we have discovered, because we are yet to discover, we are yet to discover the confirmation that the fuel went to Venezuela. I've seen it written elsewhere. But our company, our country, sold fuel to a company which due, due, due diligence has shown that everything was fine. All the payments through the banks and all of that, all that was fine. The transaction was a good transaction. What the ambassador said here in the Express article, is all that being so? Whenever you sell, a, whenever you sell a shipment of fuel, doesn't matter who buy it, doesn't matter if they go to Africa or China and they put it in in, in kerosene bottles and bring it back. If it goes to Venezuela, your laws don't matter, your customs don't matter, your 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 handling of it doesn't matter. What matters is whether we are upset about it, and what the UNC is trying to do is to stir that pot to upset the United States, hoping that they take deleterious action against Trinidad and Tobago. That, to me, is not just a fifth columnist. That is an underminer that is dangerous to everybody in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, and we're seeing it live and direct, broad, open daylight, not even doing it behind closed doors. And the question is, just who is this woman working for? And whose interests does she intend to serve? by demanding that this country be sanctioned because an aircraft from Venezuela. I tell you, you know we do more than that, eh? We didn't only allow, according to her, an aircraft to come from Venezuela. Lots of people in this country send food and sustenance to Venezuela. Are we going to be sanctioned for that too? We have 17,000 Venezuelans in this country. Venezuelans, 17,000 on temporary accommodation. We are heading in a, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic. A pandemic. We are heading towards dealing with a pandemic. Heading to close our borders. Heading to shut those 17,000 people out of sustenance in our country. Because when we close the border and shut down the, the casinos and shut down the restaurants and shut down... We knew that about 15,000 of them would be unemployed. We can't put them, as we said, on any of our support systems. We can't put them on the social support, ministry support. We can't put them on the NIB support. But would we eat and let them die here in Trinidad and Tobago? I guess not. We're better than that. And if their for, if if vice president come here, 17,000 of them and want to talk to us, you want to tell me I shouldn't talk to them? And because a plane that brought the vice president here has an American sanction that we didn't know about, you are going to call for sanction on people of Trinidad and Tobago? You are a traitor lady. Any other question? Thank you very much.